What's going on, guys? So first and foremost, I just want to give some credit to my man, Justin. Uh, I was watching his newest video yesterday. At, well, actually, at the recording of this video, it came out today. And uh, he covered some of his favorite floral fragrances based around uh, rose and a couple different notes outside of that iris and such. And I just thought it was such a great video. I know I had people reach out to me sporadically over the last six months or so asking me to update my floral list. It's been over two years since I did an iris video or anything like that. So um, I wanted to go ahead and cover 10 of my favorites because there's still so, a lot of guys out there that watch this channel that are kind of skeptical to maybe dive into more floral heavy fragrances because I get it. There's a stigma for florals have to be for the ladies. But like Justin said in his video, it's a naturally occurring and growing plant. It doesn't have a gender. If you either like the smell or you don't. And if you expand your palate and give some things a chance, you never know what you end up liking because floral fragrances are one of my absolute favorite types of fragrances. So I've got 10 great examples of what I like to reach for. And I want to talk to you about them. So stay tuned. I think we'll ease you in with one of the most popular floral fragrances for men that's very clean, very soapy, more on the safe side, I guess you could say. We're talking about Prada's Loam. Very beloved, been dubbed by king, as king of the office by many. Um, it's definitely up there. It's one of the best fragrances to wear in an office setting for sure. And nobody does soapy quite like Iris when it comes to taking a floral note and making it very soapy and clean. They do a great job with lavender, they do a great job with neroli, and they do a great job with Iris as well. Here you're going to get a little bit of a combination. I believe there is a little bit of neroli in here actually. Um, you have some cardamom, some pepper, you have a couple different things giving it some more character and some more depth to where it's not just this clean shower gel type of aromatic fragrance. You're going to get a little bit of this soft powdery tone from the iris and the combination of the iris and neroli give this nice soapy aromatic feel to it well again without being too soapy and then it's not too powdery the spices are here to give it a, provide a little bit of backbone a little bit of bite um, and it does kind of keep it from going too far in the too feminine territory to where it's a little uncomfortable for some guys this fragrance is masterfully done in my opinion this is one of the best floral fragrances ever created for men i love the low flanker and the intense flanker they are both fantastic they have not done i haven't tried water splash i've heard great things and i heard absolute is kind of an interesting one but i'm pretty confident both of those fragrances are good as well i don't think they know how to make a bad fragrance in this line and it's one that is absolutely worth getting your nose on like i said it's one of the safer plays to really kind of dabble into iris and men's floral fragrances as a whole just to see how you're going to feel about it because it's more soapy than it is bouquet of flowers type of floral which i think is one of the leading misconceptions when guys think floral fragrances to wear on their own skin so get your nose on this one if you haven't yet it's a solid performer it's a great fragrance it's Prada Lone. the next fragrance we're going to be discussing is based around the note of rose so it's the newest release from one of my beloved luxury niche houses. We're talking about Argos. It is called Adonis Awakens. Now, first and foremost, look at this beautiful artwork on the detail of the enamel painting and the texture detail of this plate. It's just an absolute work of art. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. The presentations, they're second to none. They really are. Even looking through on the back side, you can read the print on the back of the plate. Just beautiful stuff. So what's special about this is it's a very masculine rose, which, yes, guys, there are masculine rose fragrances out there, and this is one of them. It has a raspberry note that adds this kind of light, lightly sweet, fruity tone that doesn't come across super juicy, uh, too heavy of a red berry smell. It does provide help assist in providing a little bit of a radiant quality to this rose. This rose kind of comes off a little bit on the warmer side because there's some soft blonde warm woods here um, such as the sandalwood 
um, and I believe even some of the cashmere wood that was used in Danye, a previous release. It's kind of like the evolution of that fragrance because that's a beautiful blonde wood, soothing, sensual fragrance. Here you're going to find all of those qualities with the addition of this radiance of the rose. There's a little bit of fruity sweetness. There's a touch of spice here as well. There's a lot of depth to be had with this scent profile and performance is magnificent to say the least. It's one that just goes and goes and goes on your skin. Uh, I've yet to experience it becoming a skin scent. It is pretty new to my collection. I've only given it two full wearings at the recording of this. The day this video goes live, it will be my official third full wearing. I do plan on wearing this uh, tomorrow at the recording of this. Uh, putting these together, this made me excited to wear a floral fragrance. And this is the newest goodie to my collection as far, as far as floral fragrances are concerned. And it's one that's absolutely worth trying. You can get a carded sample to test the waters with this one. You can get a carded sample of everything they offer from Argos. There's always a link with a 10% off code down in my link tree, down in my video descriptions. You can get a sample pack, you can get an individual sample, or if you're ready to grab a bottle, they got 30 mLs and big 100 mLs like these. And it's, like I said, it's one of the better rose fragrances I've ever smelled. It's really good, guys. It's, it's so unique at the same time. Like I said, it borrows a lot of the elements of Danye, and then with these added notes, the raspberry and the rose and such, and the touch of spices, it really changed the complexity of the fragrance. And it went from something more unisex to honestly, this can be worn by the ladies, don't get me wrong, but it definitely leans much more on the masculine side. And the craziest part is it's centered around the rose. The rose doesn't go anywhere. It's there the whole time, the rose absolute that was used here. Get your nose on it. It's one of the best out there, in my opinion. So Adonis Awakens from Argos. Next, this is definitely a bit more on the creamy side. It's very relative to an extremely popular fragrance known as Dior Homme Intense. There's Valentino Womo Intense. There's fragrances that walk that path of being very similar sweet iris fragrances. And Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Parfum walks that similar path. What's different here is you have some, a little bit of Tolu Balsam and a little bit of resins here that add this creamy, balmy type of feel to really smooth out and enrich this fragrance. The orris that's used here, orris is the root of the iris flower. So anytime you see orris or iris, it's the same note, though admittedly when it's designer level, it can be a fantasy iris note, which it is here, where you get kind of that waxy, lipsticky, really soft powdery type of feel. That's what's used here. It's very elegant, very beautiful. This is a little bit more casual than I believe Dior Homme intends to be. Whereas that is a dress to the nines type of uh, formal fragrance that really, like I said, it begs you to have at minimum an Oxford, honestly. But I really think it needs more than that. Suit and tie, suit without a tie, black tie events. It's kind of a show out, it's elegant, it's classy, and it kind of makes a strong statement. Whereas here you get all of those same qualities, but because of that added creaminess, it adds a touch of casual, playful nature to it to where it's not maybe as serious as Dior Homme Intense. And I think that's why I actually prefer this over Dior Homme Intense. This is the reason you won't see Dior Homme Intense in this video. Though I do love it, great fragrance, not knocking it. I just prefer this when it comes to that scent profile. This is my ideal choice for it. Like I said, if you haven't tried this one and it's very affordable comparatively, you can get this one in the $50, $60 range, sometimes even cheaper depending on where you find it. Whereas you're gonna pay much more than that for a Dior Homme Intense. Valentino Womo Intense, much more difficult to get your hands on. You're gonna pay more for that as well. You really can't go wrong here. Well above average performer. It's just a beautiful fragrance, a great way to test the waters with kind of a classy iris fragrance. Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Parfum. This is a true showstopper in my personal opinion. I've only worn this three times. I used to have a decant. Now that decant I went through, I think it was 10 ml. I went through a full 10 ml of that. Since I got the bottle, I've only worn it three times. This is a very elegant special occasion. Must try for any guy that's into floral fragrances in my opinion. Iris Lovers, Neroli, if you like Jasmine, any of the white floral type of scents. Reflection Man from Amouage is, like I said, a must try. This is something that you really should get your nose on. It's nuclear in performance. Yes, this is one of the newer bottles. And it's got this light herbal green feel. There's a little bit of pedigree in here that kind of grounds the scent and gives it a different character from just being this dominant mixture of florals 
Very elegant, very classy scent. This is one that begs you to dress it up a little bit as well. Though admittedly, I think it can be a little bit more casual than that. Uh, the last time I wore it was actually for Christmas Eve this past Christmas, the recording of this. Uh, and we were doing the ugly Christmas sweater theme. And this was my choice for that evening. And trust me, I was loving the way I was smelling. It was topic of conversation with friends and family. Just a beautiful fragrance. Like I said, it begs you to dress it up or at least give it an, a situation to make a statement because this is one of those fragrances that I deem to be just a special scent profile. Like I said, if you're into florals or you're a fan of iris, neroli, or jasmine, any of these main notes that are featured in here, you really should get your nose on it. Like I said, nuclear performance. Amouage makes fragrances that are just so neat unique and out of this world in my opinion one of my favorite niche houses out there um just classics they make classics and like i said this is one of those one of those iris fragrances that needs to be experienced very expensive definitely get your hands on a decant from one of the decant sites and try it before you buy it uh, it's not necessarily blind buy safe 100 mls like this even from discount sites are going in that realm of 200 dollars. i believe i paid 199 for this when I had bought it. Sometimes you can, smaller bottles you can find cheaper than that, 150, 160 range, 170, something like that uh, for a smaller bottle, but I opted for the 100 ml, you're looking around $200. So it is a commitment in price, but you're definitely getting your money's worth. It's special occasion for me, but you may find much more uses. This is signature scent worthy for a business professional, for example. If you're wearing a suit and tie to work every day, you're showing out with a fragrance like this. This is elegant. This has a powerful statement to it when you walk into the room. It has a really strong presence. So for being full of white florals, like I was just saying, Jasmine and Neroli, very white floral, very prominent, feminine-leaning scent profiles to these floral notes with some orris root, which is iris. It's not too powdery. It's not too soapy. It's very well-balanced. Like I said, the herbal notes here really grounded. It's got a very strong woody backbone that help add a little touch of masculinity. This definitely does not lean too feminine, guys. This is one that's a must try. If you're looking to dabble in the florals and you want to experience the next level, check out Reflection Man from Amouage. Next is from a lesser known French niche house called Le Fleurs du Golf. This is one that I like to wear in the cooler weather. It's definitely more on the sweet floral side. It's technically an amber floral. They have a, an interesting note breakdown that offers exotic floral notes, amber, vanilla, and a little bit of bergamot. It's called Baccarat Vanille. No, when you see Baccarat, it is not Baccarat Rouge relatable. It is much more of a sweet amber floral. Very unisex, definitely marketed as such. Man, but it this is another one that's a showstopper. This one will turn heads. There's something very alluring about this scent profile. Like I said, the sweetness here isn't too much. It's not too heavy of a creamy vanilla, but that's definitely what's in there providing the sweetness. The bergamot doesn't come across as a juicy, super in-your-face, like, yes, that's bergamot I'm smelling. There's just a little bit of a juicy freshness at the top that I can attribute to the bergamot, whereas it's mainly based around this exotic floral notes is what they're calling it so it's a variety of florals i can't really detect anything specific i'm sure there's a bit of rose in there a bit of jasmine things like that it has that bouquet type of smell but it's very grounded with this warm amber at the same time definitely leans more on the feminine side this one's a little bit more of a challenge for those of you that aren't used to trying floral scents on your skin. So this is one you may want to work your way up to, but if you're looking for a unique experience that will stand out, it will turn heads, this will start a conversation. And you're kind of going to veer out a little bit. Confidence is key when wearing fragrances like this. Like I said, it's not the most masculine fragrance, obviously, but it's also not the most feminine. Definitely worth trying. Like I said, this is a head turner. It's called Baccarat Vanille from the Fleurs de Golf. Now, one of the reasons that Dior Homme Intense isn't in this video was number one I had a relatable scent profile already with Givenchy Gentleman EDP and what for me the ultimate in the line in the first place is Dior Homme Parfum I knew I was going to feature that in this video admittedly the whole former line from Dior Homme, Dior Homme Original, Dior Homme O, Dior Homme Intense 2012, Dior Homme Sport, Dior Homme Parfum all of the iris based fragrances in this line are phenomenal I love them. They're, this is the main line that got me so heavy into the note of Iris, and these 
fragrances in this line feature that ever so popular, ever so polarizing, ever so challenging for some guys, lipsticky, waxy, fantasy iris note. This is one of the fragrances in the line that has that lipstick makeup bag type of feel to the iris. But what's different here is you have a bit of an animalic leather, a touch of oud. There's a little bit of rose here, but I don't really get much of that. There's some orange at the top. There is a little bit of citrusy freshness, but it's mostly this animalic touch. As it dries down, there's a creamy sandalwood that kind of takes over the fragrance and it lightens it up greatly because it's a very dark fragrance in the top. And the more and more it settles and dries, it gets smoother and creamier over time. Like I said, you're looking at that iris without it being as dominant as it is in the other fragrances in the line, whereas the leather, this is actually classified as a leather fragrance because it's centered around leather. Gorgeous, one of the most masterfully composed fragrances for men ever created in my personal opinion. This is top five all time for me, guys. Uh, I do have a backup bottle. Even if I never get to it, I don't care. I wanted to make sure I had five ounces of this fragrance so in the event i need a spray i'll always have a spray it's that damn good in my opinion granted these 75 mls these older style bottles are a bit harder to find these days on ebay you're looking at astronomically ridiculous resale prices but there is still in production the newer 100 milliliter bottles that from what i'm told is a little bit fresher technically but the same scent profile overall nothing really different here um, it, this is a nuclear performer. I've heard that's a very good performer as well. This one still can dress up very well, but it has kind of that bad boy edge to it. This one works well with like a bomber jacket, a leather jacket, those types of evening situations. Yes, you can wear this one during the day, but this one just begs you to take it out at night and go have drinks with friends, with your girl, whatever. This is go out and have a good time at night. Show out. This is a show out type of fragrance. A lot of these really are. They're interesting conversation starters because they're unique scent profiles and again the average guy isn't wearing a floral dominated fragrance whereas not as dominated here like it is at others in the line you still get a nice dose of that fantasy iris note it's still nice and powdery has a little bit of that waxy lipstick quality but like i said before it's based around this rough and tumble slightly animalic leather just an absolutely beautiful fragrance that i think everyone should experience at some point is the oron parfum now this next one has a strong similarity to a very popular fragrance a very popular mason francis kirk john fragrance we're talking about baccarat rouge 540 this is kind of men sarah's take on it but it's much more floral dominant you're going to get a lot more of the jasmine than you do in baccarat rouge we're talking about Instant Crush. This is another one that's a ridiculous performer, guys. You don't need a lot of sprays of this one. It is, a, and this is the magnetic cap as well, one of the newer styles. I've never sprayed more than four sprays because I just don't need to. So you're gonna get some spices here. You're gonna get a touch of that saffron to give you a little bit of a leathery feel. It is warm spicy at its core, but it's heavy white floral at the same time. It's dosed full of amber wood, this lovely ambery woody, type of man-made synthetic that really gives it a lot of this power that I was talking about. Really pushes. Strong, warm feel. The ginger here is the dominating spicy note, which is typically a slightly creamy, crisp, fresh, spicy type of note. But the amber wood's so heavy here, it kind of warms it up and turns what would have been a fresh, spicy accord into a much more warm and spicy accord. Not super warm, but definitely much warmer than you would anticipate when you look at the note breakdown. And like I said, the saffron kind of plays a part in that as well. But you're going to get a lot of the jasmine here. It has a stronger white floral tone to it than Baccarat Rouge 540. It's beautiful. This has a nice elegance to it, but it also can dress down pretty well. Also, I don't think it's the best t-shirt fragrance, don't get me wrong, but you can pull it off depending on the situation. A nice v-neck going, you know, catch up with somebody having, you know, an early dinner meetup type of thing or something this will work in that situation with a v-neck though admittedly you should dress it up a little bit more because like i said that white floral tone definitely adds a bit of an elegance to it but this is one that's extremely popular among the fragrance community when it comes to floral fragrances and mancera fragrances as a whole this is definitely one of their more popular sellers for good reason it's really good stuff it's only been out for a couple of years now and like i said if you're looking for a beast be wary of it. If you're not the type that wants to make a gigantic impression when you're trying out, kind of just dabbling in the florals, go easy on the sprays. Because this one, this one makes a statement. This one's loud. This one pronounces, I'm here. 
It's Mancera Instant Crush. This next one is a very special fragrance for me personally. I only wear it in very situational type of things where I know I'm going to be dressing well. I want to make a statement. I want to stand out. I want to smell different. It's based around hyacinth and iris. It's very musky. It's fruity at the top. It is Zerzhov Ascento. This is one that I seldom pull out. This is a beautiful 50 ml with this nice velvety feel. Beautiful fragrance. Purple is a good color for this because it's iris and hyacinth, some purple florals. Oh, it's such a beautiful fragrance. This is so good. Monster performer on my skin. Like I said, this one is one that I pull out when I want to make a statement and it's going to be at least a business casual or better type of situation because it's so fresh. It's so clean and fruity. The pineapple that's used at the top really adds this nice juicy fruit appeal without making it too sweet, but there is a nice fruity sweetness going on here. The hyacinth and the iris really take over this fragrance until you get later into the dry down. You will get this nice clean white musky feel. Even from the very beginning, almost after about 10-15 minutes, the musk kind of really sets in, but it doesn't become the star of the show until a few hours in. It's a gorgeous, very clean musk. Clean, clean, clean fragrance. Powerful, too, and has a little bit of complexity. It will change. Like I said, you're getting fruity freshness up top. There's a little hit of pink pepper that comes in and out to help with that sweetness, though never really making it spicy in any way on my skin. I never really get anything spicy from it. Um, and it's definitely on the more powdery side. The floral tones here do offer a bit more powder than some are probably used to. But the, the beauty of this one is it's super high quality. You will stand out. You won't smell cheap. It won't smell like some cheap flowers. This is a very beautiful, elegant, and professional type of scent profile. That's why I pull it out, like I said, in business, casual, or better type of situations. When I really want to make a statement and stand out, even potentially have a conversation about my fragrance. I'm not saying that's guaranteed when I wear it, but it has happened, you know. Beautiful fragrance, definitely sample worthy. Nobody talks about this one. This is a great fragrance from Zerzhov. This is a scented. <sighs> Next, we have another incredibly masculine rose fragrance. Admittedly, very unisex. My wife has her own bottle. It smells incredible on her. Different skin chemistries uh, with different hormones and such and pheromones will make it smell a little bit different. Um, this has a variety of high quality roses. There's fresh Turkish rose. There's a slightly jammy Bulgarian rose. We are talking about Zaharoff Signature Rose. My favorite fragrance from the house, hands down. For as good as tobacco and all these other fragrances are, Rose is a showstopper. Can be worn year round, actually works really well. In the summertime, um, this was featured in Justin's video as well, and I totally agree with him. Um, how it works in the summer that he was referring to, I've smelled it on him in the summer. It's got this light, sweet oud type of feel with this freshness on his skin. I picked him up from the airport, and he was wearing it. I've told that story before. For me, on my skin, the incense pops. The olibanum tears that's used here screams off of my skin. From start to finish, it's more about incense than it is about rose for me. Rose incense is what George Zaharoff was trying to capture with the storytelling of this fragrance, and uh, he absolutely did so. The sweetness here is there, but it's not too much. There's a sugar cane note and a, a vanilla bean note, if I remember correctly. And when you hear those two, it may sound like it's going to be really sweet. And there is a nice underlying, lightly thick sweetness to it, but it's underlying. It's not heavy. It doesn't take over the fragrance. By no means would I call this a very sweet fragrance. And the oud here offers this warm wood appeal without having that oudy smell that some may be a little concerned about. It doesn't smell like, you know, the thousands of oud rose fragrances that are on the market because it's at its core, it's not really an oud rose fragrance. It's a rose incense. And it's beautifully done. This is one that makes a statement I have gotten many compliments wearing this fragrance. I wear it for a variety of situations, casually, dressed up, dinner dates, going run errands, going to the grocery store. I've worn it for just about everything. I don't wear it to the gym, obviously. I think it's a little bit much for that and not the best choice. But uh, hey, if you want to wear it to the gym, wear it to the gym. But definitely one of the more masculine, show-stopping type of rose fragrances I've ever smelled. Zaharoff Signature Rosé. This last one I intentionally saved for last. This in no way was ranked, but I did purposefully save this fragrance for last because it's marketed to women. This is a women's fragrance. This is, it's not so challenging. That's not why I saved it for last. It's mainly because it's strictly marketed as is. 
Uh, it's not marketed as unisex, though I deem it to be very unisex. If you like rose, if you like iris, you will like this. It's a simplistic, simplistic fragrance in its note breakdown, but the blend and the quality is just lights out. It's Kajal Eau de Parfum from Kajal Perfumes. This is marketed for the ladies. This is a few different citruses like orange, lemon, bergamot. Beautiful, light, fresh, juicy citrus medley at the top with some beautiful orris and fresh, bright Turkish rose. It's a little woody. There's some clean musk. It's a very clean and super fresh floral. Very fresh floral. It is very powdery. This is one of the more powdery fragrances in the video, but this is one that ever since I tried a sample from a discovery set years ago, I knew I had to have this one. This was my third fragrance from the house. I have every fragrance from Kajal Perfumes. This was the third fragrance I picked up. They have several really damn good floral based fragrances in the collection. Um, fragrances like Lamar, which is a beautiful rose and marigold marketed for men. My favorite fragrance from the house technically, but as far as my favorite floral, it's this. They have Yasmina, which is more of an earthy animalic type of jasmine based, jasmine and saffron fragrance. They have some floral options. They have oud roses. They have all that good stuff. But this is just so fresh, so clean, so easy going, such a great office appropriate scent, great for work. And admittedly, yes, this is more on the feminine side. You have to have some confidence to wear this fragrance. But at the end of the day, you got to wear what you like. Again, like Justin said in his video, like I said at the beginning as well, flowers don't have a gender. You either like the way it smells or you do not. Because you should not be wearing fragrances for everyone else. You should be wearing it for yourself. This is to complete your wardrobe. And a fragrance like this, in my experiences, the main times I wore them is when wearing an Oxford. Nice slacks and an Oxford this fragrance works wonders. It is fresh enough, clean enough to be casual, but it does dress up very well because it's just so fresh and clean. It's mega versatile. It works great every season year round. Shines in the summer, works just as well in the winter. Get a decant and try it. This, is, this might be a little bit more of a challenge for you guys because it's so fresh and floral, but I'll tell you what, it's beautiful. Kajal Eau de Parfum. Well, that's the 10 floral fragrances that I have for you today. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback, and I love hearing from you guys. Have you tried any of the fragrances that I featured in this video? I have many more fr floral fragrances that I really enjoy. This is just the 10 that really give the most variety, that when I'm in the mood for florals, these are the ones that I kind of reach for the most. Admittedly, a few of these are very, very situational for me because they're just so elegant and classy. I treat them as such when I wear, the, wear them for those situations. Uh, but there's some really good stuff. There's some great daily wear stuff, a bunch of quality here, even from the designers that are on here, not just the niche fragrances. Quality across the board. Nothing smells cheap. A lot of these aren't cheap, but none of them smell cheap either. That's the beauty of it. So I really hope this video was helpful for some of you. Maybe get a, get a sample on some of these and try them out. Like I said, link tree below. We'll have links for a lot of these. Uh, and until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of these 10 and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys. Mm -hmm.